The banks do have themselves to blame to a large extent. Uh, they have taken advantage of, in effect, a, a free government taxpayer subsidy to take risk. They've made great profits on the back of that, and then when those profits went sour, the costs, the losses have essentially been uh, subsidised by the taxpayer. And understandably, people find that unacceptable. If you go back, back to 1960, the top 10 US banks' assets accounted for uh, about 6% uh, or so of the total GDP, total economy. Uh, in 2010, uh, that number had gone up tenfold. And essentially, the banks overexpanded. So in the, in the near term, really for the next few years, they are having to shrink to get back to some normal level of, of, uh, of size relative to the economy. Beyond that, I think they face uh, really quite slow growth. If you think of a rich, mature economy like the US, the UK, people's financial services are pretty well taken care of. There isn't really much fundamental growth in either retail services or, or, uh, or wholesale services. The banks are essentially a mature industry and they just have to live with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but that does mean that even after the, the, the size adjustment has taken place, uh, we should expect the banks to be a much less exciting and more slow-growing part of the economy. The banks are being asked to hold more capital because of all the various ways in which you can reduce the risk to the public, to the whole economy, from a banking crisis. Holding more capital, more, more risk reserves, is probably the best way to do it. The problem is, from the bank's point of view, that means that the return on the capital that they uh, that they try and make is, uh, is, is harder to achieve because they have a higher base on which to make it. And in the short term, all they can really do is cut their costs, which is mainly people. Uh, what they hope for in the longer term is uh, rising revenues. But what we're seeing and what we have to see is a fundamental increase, a permanent increase in the amount of capital that they hold. They have been undercapitalized in the past and that's really, uh, the, it, it's what the public uh, need to expect of them, that they hold much greater capital in the future. There is a long history of the banking system going through what you might call booms and busts. Banks do periodically lend too much, uh, they become overconfident, they become uh, euphoric, and they lend too much to real estate, sometimes it's retail real estate, sometimes it's commercial, sometimes it's land, sometimes they lend too much to foreign countries. And so there is, there is a certain ebb and flow. What we saw in the last crisis was something much bigger and with far more damage to the rest of the economy. So I think it's impossible to say that we can ever prevent banking uh, crises. What we can prevent, or at least what we should hope to prevent, is those crises endangering the whole economy the way they did in 2007-8 and imposing such enormous costs on those outside the banking system. As an economist, I tend to look for incentives to explain people's behaviour. Uh, it, it's not necessarily the, the total explanation, but I think it gets you a long way. What happened in all of the banks in varying degrees is that as more and more money was available, as more and more profits were available from particular activities, people were sucked into doing more of them and perhaps starting to bend the rules or at least to make what now look like very poor judgments, ethically poor judgments, if not necessarily actually breaking the law. As the profits ebb away again, I think you'll see behavior change, but I, don't, I think it's very hard to prescribe a change in culture. Uh, there is a natural um, conservatism that comes back in after a crisis. The real problem is what happens five or ten years down the line when things start getting very profitable again. Unless you have safeguards in place to discourage people from taking that risk taking, I think relying on improved culture is not going to work. I think the, the new guard, as it were, of people running banks uh, in the UK in particular, uh, these are, are, are very you know, good, honourable, experienced people. And if anyone can improve the quality of decision making and improve the culture, they can. Uh, that does take a long time and I think it, it, it requires a relentless emphasis on, on how to behave in particular situations. And I think that can be reinforced to some extent by the way finance is taught and by you know, quasi-professional organisations like the, the CFA. These are all positive things potentially moving, moving the banks in a, a better direction. But I still think that the, the key to avoiding a crisis and avoiding the kind of behaviour that puts the whole economy in jeopardy is to make sure that such, uh, such profits as do arise are 
are properly earned. They are earned from disciplined risk-taking without a subsidy from the taxpayer and with a, a, a system of, uh, of regulation that, uh, that, that stops the banks becoming so profitable that they start to believe that what they do is, is, uh, is perfect. That overconfidence is characteristic of financial crises and you cannot rely, I think, on the banks to police themselves. It's got to be partly done by regulation. The Chinese banks are very different in a number of ways. They're actually much simpler than the Western banks because the Chinese financial system is, is still relatively uh, undeveloped compared with the US or the UK, and in certain respects that might be an advantage. Uh, they're currently a lot more profitable and likely to stay so, partly because they have a certain, in a sense, guaranteed profitability because of the way the, uh, the Chinese financial system works, and they have a favoured status uh, essentially from, from the government. Uh, that status may be taken away. Even in China, there's a sense that the banks are not quite as popular as they used to be. And in that sense, I think they have to earn their living more. The great advantage they have compared with the Western banks is that the Chinese uh, market for financial services is likely to grow far more over the next 20, 30 years than the West. Quite simply because as people become wealthier, they want all the financial services that we take for granted in the West. They obviously want bank accounts, but they want savings products, they want pensions, life insurance. And these things are beginning to develop in China, but most people have um, still very, very limited financial services. That means enormous growth uh, for the banks and possibly other financial institutions. Whereas in the West, it's a saturated, mature market, so the growth is going to be much less.